Hello, my name is Jake and I'm going to be showing you how you can access Zoom meetings at home during the time of isolation. So let's get started, let's head over to the screen. Logging onto your computer, you want to get to your starter page. Now yours is obviously going to look different, but I'm having to use a virtual system for this. So. Um, you want to get onto your homepage on Windows and make your way to Internet Explorer. When you open Internet Explorer, you want to search for your emails or however you've received the link, whether it's on Facebook, on Messenger, if you're going onto the Messenger tab. So all the different ways that you can get the links, you want to make your way to your link. Once you've made your way to the link, that's when you can open up your email and this is one that I sent earlier from the Community Objectives email address, just so I could show you guys how you can access Zoom at home. So, on the email, you might receive one that looks like this. You might want receive one that doesn't have the dial-in numbers as well. Um, what I do recommend is I've never tried the dial-in by phone. Um, it's not something that I know anything about, so if you do have questions about that, please contact Zoom themselves because they can give you a little bit more information. And I'm no expert on Zoom, but this is just a quick way on how you can access it. If you have got any questions, please direct them straight to Zoom. So, once you get onto your emails, you'll see a link, you'll see a meeting ID number, and you'll also see a password. Some meetings don't have passwords. So you, sometimes you won't need them. Now I've set up a password just so you guys at home can see what it's like when you have a password set for a meeting. So the first thing you want to do is you want to head to the link. Heading to the link, it will open up a page that should, should have your program open automatically. If like this one, it does come up with a look for the app in the Microsoft Store, click look for the app, click OK, and it should open up the Microsoft Store. Unfortunately, because Microsoft don't have it in their store, you just want to close that down. I have no idea why it does that, it just does. So, download and run Zoom, this little blue bit of writing here. You want to click that, and then you will see a pop-up that says, what do you want to do with this? All I tend to do is just click run. If you want to save it and install it later, you can do, but for now, I'm going to click run. Click run and then you'll notice a little icon pop up here, which is Zoom itself. So Zoom is installing itself into your computer. This is how simple it actually is. So Zoom's installing itself into the computer. It will run itself and then close itself down. And then it should, by theory, relaunch itself. As you can see in the corner, the zoom has come into the corner. I don't know why I'm pointing, I'm like trying to point to my screen. <laughs> zoom has popped up in the corner and then we also get the icon that pops up as an open application. It opens itself up and then it says enter your name. So for this one, I am going to put um, Tester Jake. And it says remember my name from your future meetings? Yeah, why not? Then it will come up saying join meeting. Now, because you've already clicked that link, when it says join meeting, this will pop up, you will see that you are just waiting in the waiting room and then the meeting host, which in this case is me anyway, uh, will allow you into the room. This is only when they have the waiting room setting turned on. If they don't have the waiting room setting turned on, you should instantly be put forward to that call. So, if I just allow this tester Jake into the meeting we can now see that we're on a call with ourselves as well which is really strange isn't it automatically join by audio on the computer when joining a meeting that is something that you really want to have turned on because when you join the meeting you want them to be able to hear you straight away click join with computer audio and now we're on the call we can now have a chat and you should be able to see the people on the call. Now, with this, there's a lot of different settings inside of Zoom. 
on the one thing, if anything, if you take anything away from today, the one thing that you need to do is when you get on a call and different people are speaking, it will take you onto this page, which will keep flashing all the different people on the call, which for me, I find that annoying. For you, you might be okay with that. So you want to go onto the call and you want to click <coughs> gallery view. Now, when you click gallery view, you will see the two different clips. Um, and what will happen is, your video doesn't start automatically. So you have to click start video. So we've got gallery view and we can see all the different people. <laughs> I love how this is out of lag. You can see all the different people and then you need to start your video. So once you start your video, mine unfortunately is saying that it can't detect a camera because I'm on two calls on the same computer. Um, but your camera will instantly pop up. You should be in a good call there. Once you're done with the meeting, you've had enough of the people that you're chatting to, you want to just head over to leave meeting, click that, and click leave meeting. Once you left the meeting, that's where your program will close. If you've already got Zoom, when you click the link, it will automatically pop up and open up on your computer. But you might want to start a call with somebody. So, what you want to do is you want to just open up the Zoom app on your computer and it'll say join a meeting or sign in. Now if you want to sign in, you can sign in with Google or Facebook. You might want to create a profile for itself and its own and if you did want to, you just need to head on to the sign up free button there but I sign in with Google so this is the test the test account that we have here at Community Objectives and it will just ask me to verify my date of birth um, now once I've confirmed my date of birth I'm just gonna click on create account and it will launch Zoom. Now, it will start the app, and as soon as the app starts, it will bring up four little boxes. Now, these four boxes are really simple to understand. If you want to share your PC screen with somebody, you can use this setting. You can also do that when you are in the middle of a video call as well. So there is quite a lot that you can do, whether you might want a movie night with friends, maybe. Um, and you can share your PC screen with people that way. You can schedule calls and you can head over and begin to create them. It will insert into your Google Calendar, your Microsoft Calendar, um, or any other calendars that you've set up that you might want to pop it into. The settings that I tend to have on is I take the password requirement off unless it's a really important meeting that I don't want anybody else getting the link to. Um, and then I also have video for the host, which is myself, and the participants, I also have that on. And I just switch computer audio only, um, just to make it a little bit easier when people join in. There's no confusion around whether or not they're doing it on their telephone, or whether they're doing it through the computer. So you can schedule that meeting and invite others to that as well. When you click schedule, it will take you over to your um, Gmail account or your Outlook account and you can email it off to all the people that you want to do there and um, you want present at the meeting. You can click uh, new meeting, start the new meeting. It should bring up the webcam but it hasn't so it hasn't started the webcam unfortunately so to change that I'm just going to click start the video unfortunately because I'm using this program to record it won't allow me to open up the camera during the app use um, but your camera will then pop up so you have started a new meeting you want it to be off the cuff and you want to invite people all you need to do is you click participants and then there's a little button here that says invite click invite and then you can click copy the URL which is the link that we clicked on to access the original um, video before or you can click copy invitation, which will give them the meeting password, uh, the meeting ID and the password as well. So, if I was to click copy the invitation, 
and somebody has sent you an invitation to start a video, you might want to join their video. If you go to join the video, that's when you will have a meeting ID and then a name. So the meeting ID might be one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can now join. If that was a proper um, meeting ID, that would then come up asking you for a password, type your password in and you are on the call. And when all is done, that is you on your meeting with Zoom and you can enjoy face-to-face -face conference calling with your friends. I will do another one which is about accessing Zoom on your phones, but preferably I would recommend accessing it on a laptop or a computer just because it makes it a little bit more fluid and usually it's a lot easier to access it on a computer because you can leave the laptop or the computer with a webcam to stand alone while you go about doing your things, messing with all sorts of stuff. If you are using a desktop computer, just remember you do need a webcam um, if your screen doesn't have one. But I'll also do another video about how to access it on your phones too. And this video is to help anybody who's trying to access that Zoom conference call in that being able to stay connected with friends and family, the app and these conference call apps like FaceTime and Skype and um, the, the Google one that nobody uses. I can't put that out of there, can I? The Google one, um, Google Hangout. <laughs> All of these conference calls are really meaning that we can stay connected, which is great, isn't it? During this time of isolation, yes, we need to stay home and stay safe, but we also need to stay connected and make sure that we're reaching out to those people that might be on their own. Look out for your neighbor. Just make sure you're looking out two meters away from them. <laughs> so stay home, stay safe. This video is funded by Latchford Big Local and it's to help the residents in the Latchford Big Local area. Um, so if you are a resident, please reach out to Latchford Big Local, say thank you. Um, they're helping us to help you guys um, and we've got a lot of projects coming up in the near future. Both Latchford Big Local and Community Objectives have got so many projects coming up um, and we're really working to try and keep everybody um, entertained, engaged and having an active say in their community without being outside in the community. So stay home, stay safe and I will see you later. Bye!